upload workflows are a new type of workflow that allow you to specify actions and behaviors that can occur automatically when you upload files. Now, first of all, before we go any further, you need to be an admin in order to access and modify workflows. So if you're not an admin, you won't even see the workflows item in the menu. So let's go to the workflows page. And as you can see, there are three upload workflows for audio files, image files, and video files. And we'll come back to those in a minute, but I'm just going to show you the basic workflow for creating a new upload workflow. First, specify a name for the workflow. This name should be as descriptive as possible so that other people understand what the workflow is supposed to do. I'm going to call mine overlays. Um, then you specify the scope. And the scope controls where in the project the workflow applies. And by default, it's everywhere. But I can, for example, go in and I can change it so that it only applies to files in the client's department. Or I can specify specific folders. And the workflow will apply to all files uploaded to that folder or any subfolders. For now, I'm just going to keep it on everywhere. The match section controls which files it applies to. By default, no matches are specified, which means that it applies to every type of file. But I can go in and I can say file type is video so that it only applies to video files. And I can add more than one match type. So for instance, I could say the width of the video has to be greater than 600 pixels. I can choose whether all of these have to be true or just one of them. But for now, I only want it to apply to video, so I'll take that off. And then you choose what you want to occur once the workflow gets triggered. And so I can apply a file workflow, for instance. So I'm going to apply the needs approval workflow. So that means it automatically applies the needs approval file workflow and sends out an email to approvers on the team telling them that they need to review the file. So that's useful because it means you don't have to do that manually. So it saves you a step. And the next one is convert to playable file. Generally, you want that to be on. If you have that off, then Collaborate won't convert your videos. And in some cases, you might want that if you want to override our encoding settings. But generally speaking, our encoding settings are designed to be fast and compatible. So generally speaking, you won't convert to playable file switched on. So I can choose to add a watermark. And I can browse to an image located in my project. And Collaborate will burn that onto the video. I can also apply a LUT. And I can just browse to a .cube file within my project and Collaborate will apply that to any video or image file that this workflow applies to. And you can create .cube files quite easily from DaVinci Resolve. For now, I'm just going to add some overlays. The overlays allow you to bed information from the project into the video. So I'm going to put a time code overlay at the bottom. Then I'm going to put the frame rate in the bottom left side, in the bottom right side. I'm going to put the, a frame counter in the top left. I'm going to put the file name. And then on the top right, I'm going to put the name of the project. So I'm going to save that. And then I'm going to go back to files. And I'm going to upload a very quick video. Okay, and as you can see, it automatically applied the needs approval workflow to it. So if I go in there, as you can see, it's burned the overlays into the video. So I have the title at the top left, I have the project name at the top right, I have the frame rate at the bottom left, I have time code, which matches here in the middle, and then I have a frame counter at the bottom right. OK, now let's talk about the default workflows for a second. 
there's a workflow for video files, and what it does is matches all video files and it converts them. And then there's one that does the same for audio files. And then for image files, we don't convert every image. We convert specific ones that won't display in a web browser. And then those get converted to JPEGs. So for the image file upload workflow, we're matching any of these specific file extensions. Now, as you may have noticed, if you look at the video files, scope and match, it's identical to the overlays, scope and match. And so the question is, well, how does Collaborate know which workflow to apply? And the way it works is it goes through and collates all the workflows together from the least specific to the most specific. So for instance, the video files one would be an example of a workflow that's not very specific because it matches every folder and it matches video. A more specific workflow would be a workflow where the scope is set to the folder that the file was uploaded to, or that has more match types, or for example, a direct match for the file's title. Those would be examples of more specific workflows that Collaborate would rate higher. And so what happens is in my more specific workflow, if I add things like, say, watermarks that aren't present in the least specific workflow, those get merged together. So the most specific workflow will override anything in the previous workflows, but if it doesn't override them, then it inherits them from those earlier ones. So workflows can actually complement each other. So let me show you an example of that. I'm going to edit the overlays workflow, and I'm going to set it not to apply everywhere, but only to apply to files in the client's department. I'm going to switch the file workflow off. And then I'm going to go to the video files workflow. And then I'm going to apply the file workflow needs approval. OK, so now the file workflow is being applied in the more general workflow. And the overlays are being applied in the more specific workflow. Okay, so let's see how that works in practice. I'm going to delete this file. Okay, so here's what happens when I upload a file outside of the client's project. Okay, so it has the needs approval workflow applied, but if I go into it, there are no overlays on the file because that workflow only applies to the client's department. So now I'm going to go in and I'm going to upload that file again to the client's department and let's see what happens there. Now it gets the needs approval workflow even though it's not in the overlays workflow because it inherits it from the broader workflow. So then if I go in, and you can see it has the overlays. So the overlays were only applied to the file uploaded to the client's department, as we specified in the workflow. So some examples of how you could use this functionality. You can, for example, choose to apply certain actions only to files in certain departments or folders. So for instance, you could choose to automatically apply watermarks to files uploaded to the client's department, but not any other department. And you could automatically add a LUT to files uploaded to the dailies department, but no other department. Another way to use this would be to enforce organizational rules. So for instance, if all videos are supposed to be uploaded to a videos folder and someone uploads it outside of that folder, then you can make sure it's moved to the right place. Because you can apply a file workflow, and so that means that you can apply all of the normal actions available to file workflows. So you can move files to a different folder, you can color code them, you can require approval, you can add labels underneath, you can send out a link to people outside the project automatically, for instance. And so all of that functionality is available to upload workflows if you link a file workflow to them.
Another way file workflows are useful is in allowing you to automatically QC files. So to demo this, so I'm going to first of all create a new file workflow and I'm going to call this QC failure. I'm going to color code the file red and I'm going to say QC failed on the file status. Okay, so now I'm going to create a new upload workflow and I'm going to call this QC. I'm going to match only video files and I know that I want my video to be exactly 720p. So if I say if it's not 1280 and it's not 720 then we apply the file workflow QC failure so let's see what that looks like so I'm going to upload this new file which by the way is 1080p so because we only want 720p files in that workflow, it's going to get the failure alert. Yeah, see there we are. Because it was 1080p, it highlighted it red and it says QC failed underneath. One final thing I want to show off is how to use file name flags to affect the behavior of upload workflows. So let's create a new upload workflow. And I'm going to call this watermark. And I'm going to say match video files. And this time I'm going to say the file title has to contain hashtag watermark. And then if it contains that, we go add watermark. And one thing to note is that when you select add watermark or add overlays or apply LUT, it automatically ticks the box to convert to a playable file because you can't add a watermark unless it gets converted. So I'm going to browse for a watermark and I'm going to choose an image I uploaded earlier. OK, and now I'm going to go save. OK, then I'm going to go to the Files page, and now I'm going to upload two files, one called Sintel Trailer, and one called Sintel Trailer Hashtag Watermark. Let's wait for this to finish. And it's saying QC failed because of the previous workflow. So let's look at this. As you can see, Sintel Trailer has no watermark applied. Let's go back to Files. And then we go to Sintel Trailer hashtag watermark. As you can see, it has the watermark over the image. Now, you don't have to use hashtags. I mean, it, you could literally match anything in the file name. But it's very powerful because, let's say, you have dailies that you're uploading and um, some of them have different LUTs. So maybe you have a day LUT and a night LUT. And so you can use parts of the file name to tell Collaborate which upload workflow to use. Upload workflows are great for keeping a project organized and making sure that people are uploading the right files to the right places. And having Collaborate automatically deal with that is a lot simpler than having to educate your colleagues and clients about how best to use the software. Once you set it up, it will correct basic mistakes for them or, or flag them up. Upload workflows are really powerful. If you haven't seen our tutorial on file workflows, I definitely recommend checking that out because the two go hand in hand together. As always, we have help available at the bottom of the screen, and that will give you more details on how to use the workflow function. And you can contact us at any time if you have any questions.